Hey guys, this is Tom at VSC, and we're going to talk about Turbo Surge on the L5P GM Duramax. So, Turbo Surge is something that's extremely popular in the market right now. I don't know why um, people talk so much about it, but I'm going to explain why the GM L5P Duramax that runs a Borg One or turbocharger experiences surge so often compared to its outgoing counterpart that was on previous generation Duramaxes, the Garrett Turbos. So, this is an L5P Turbo that we cut the uh, half of the front cover away so people can kind of see how they operate. Uh, this turbocharger uses an actuator that's electronically controlled by the ECM. So the ECM gives signals to the actuator which operates a lever on the back of it to control the how the vein cage moves. And the vein cage is connected to a link that's connected right here. So when the ECM gives this linkage a signal to control boost pressure and compressor flow, the vein cage can move extremely quick. The reason that the L5P, even in stock form, can experience some surging is because this turbo can get right into a situation of high pressure ratio and low compressor flow extremely quick. So that is exactly what classic surge is. Classic surge is when the turbocharger goes to extremely high pressure ratio, which is basically boost pressure divided by atmospheric pressure, which we'll get into that in a second, and super low compressor flow. So how much, um, how, many how many pounds mass per minute or grams per second uh, is the compressor delivering to the motor? So Borg Warner did a pretty good job with the compressor. They designed a map groove, if you can zoom right in here, Brady, there is a map groove right here in the factory Borg Warner turbocharger. And the map groove, as the turbo is spinning, it alleviates some of the pressure through the outflow of the turbo and then back into the inlet. And I can simulate this with the, the factory air horn hooked up right back into the inlet or the volute area of the turbo. And the idea is to minimize the pressure gradient from the low pressure area, which is the volute area of the turbo to the exducer. So inducer to exducer minimize the pressure gradient. So it would direct airflow right back into the, the volute during areas of high pressure ratio and low compressor surge to minimize this pressure gradient. So this turbo is super easy even in factory configuration because of the actuator that's electronically controlled to get the turbo into a high pressure ratio and low pressure or low compressor flow. Uh, scenario really quickly. Um, the other thing that impacts the the L5P as far as um, c the classic surge scenario goes is tuning. Tuning can easily drive these turbochargers if we're not careful into a, a, a high pressure ratio and low compressor flow uh, surge area. So that's one type of surge. The other type of surge is um, electronic surge. An electronic surge is when the actuator and the ECM are communicating on the network and the ECM detects something that would uh, put the turbo into surge. The turbo isn't mechanically in surge like we just talked about. The ECM believes it needs to go to an electronic surge condition which would open the vein cage up to reduce dry pressure and, and slow compressor sp speed to try to slow down um, or lower the pressure ratio. So those are the two types of surge, surge that we see, and the other one is called controlled surge. So that surge is when the compressor flow is higher than the demand by the motor. And that is typically when you let off the gas and you got a, a, a pretty high uh, pressure and compressor flow. You let off the gas, air demand goes down uh, as needed by the motor, and the, the turbo slows down really quickly. So it doesn't hurt anything when you go into a surge like that because the, the demand isn't high uh, by the motor and the VGT is opening up to remove it. We're telling it to do that. But the classic surge is bad and we'll show what it looks like um, on HP Tuner Scanner because classic surge slows the turbocharger down and you get a lot of shuddering and we'll show what it looks like but, it, but the turbo would be spinning fast and then when enter surge it drastically slows down and it's causing a huge pressure imbalance across the turbine and the compressor. So I'm going to show what it looks like um, when we talk about compressor surge. 
So this is a Borg Warner map. <clears throat> I don't really know what it's off of. I think it was an S300 that I pulled. But this line, th this is what we refer to as a compressor map. And uh, what it's talking about here is the efficiency islands. When we make our own turbochargers here at VSE, we make maps very similar to this with efficiency islands and um, where the turbo would enter surge and choke. So this line right here represents pressure ratio. And pressure ratio is boost and gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure divided by atmospheric pressure plus a system depression. So to, to run a math scenario here, if I was at 20 pounds of gauge pressure, and that would be commanded by the motor or the ECM, and I was at 14.7, which is basically one atmospheric pressure or one bar or 100 uh, kPa, if you divide that by 14.7 minus one system depression, you end up with a pressure ratio of 2.53. That's how the ECM determines where, uh, where it's at as far as pressure ratio goes. So this is pressure ratio. And this is compressor flow. Compressor flow is, uh, can be measured by the mass airflow sensor on the motor. This is the outflow. This is corrected outflow of compressor flow. And a, a case where the, the, an L5P can enter surge very easy compared to like the LML and the previous generation Duramaxes is because if I was say at 0.24 um, uh, corrected mass flow, which is kilograms per second, and I take my 0.24 line and I'm sitting on the, let's just say right above where the, the compressor would be most efficient, let's just say 0.74 percent efficiency or 74 percent efficient and the user stepped on the gas the electronic actuator of the VGT on the L5P compared to the LML could very easily drive pressure ratio boost pressure up extremely quick and our users that have drove tune trucks and stock L5Ps they'll notice that they notice that the L5P is extremely responsive compared to its uh, off-going um, LML and, and previous generation Duramaxes. So pressure ratio can go up extremely quick compared to compressor mass flow. That's why the L5P goes into compressor surge extremely quick compared to the other Duramaxes. Um, that is a problem because this line right here, this black line that is not discussed on this map, but I'll tell you what it is, this is the surge line. And if you crest cross the surge line or come pretty close to the surge line, um, the compressor has a high probability of entering surge. So what the compressor will do to try to remove itself from surge is open the vein cage up or electronically, or it will lose its suction on the incoming atmospheric pressure. So again, if I'm at 14.7 um, PSIA atmospheric pressure, that's all I got for atmospheric pressure at the inlet of the volute of the compressor. So it will slow down rapidly, which lowers pressure ratio. Now I haven't asked for less compressor flow. The ECM is gonna command a lower pressure ratio, either electronically, or the compressor is gonna lose its grip on the incoming air, the atmospheric air, and it's gonna lower the pressure ratio to get it away from the surge area. And that is uh, just a byproduct of the way the ECM and the algorithms inside the L5P ECM and mechanically how the L5P uh, compressor works. So things that will remove the compressor from surge or pull the, the idea is to stay to the right of this line, things that'll keep it to the right is a really good air cleaner or something that, that gives the turbo the most amount of possible incoming air at the inlet of the compressor. That's the volute section of the compressor. Um, clean air filters. Don't drive the turbocharger with a high, uh, high pressure ratio and low compressor flow. So a lot of times that uh, that's experienced is when the truck's at a super low RPM, it's ingesting a really low amount of corrected mass flow. Let's just say 0 0.2, 0 0.16 kilograms per second um, area. So low RPM, 1200, 1300 RPM. And the user commands a really high pressure ratio and the corrected mass flow is still really low. Um, <clears throat> it's a scenario when the truck will easily enter mechanical surge. Uh, if it doesn't enter mechanical surge, eventually the ECM will see it needs to um, be an electronic surge and open the, 
the vanes up to try to remove some of the dry pressure to slow compressor speed down. So what does surge look like, um, mechanical surge? So I can show you on HP tuners. So we simulated this right here. This is with our 64.5 millimeter uh, turbo on, on our dyno. So <clears throat> what you see here is the, the pink line that's at the top is math and that's in frequency or Hertz and the and pounds mass per minute which is that light blue line and I'm steady state throttle on the dyno um, trying to get the truck to enter surge so I have to command a pretty high pressure ratio to get there so I'm asking for 16 17 pounds of gauge pressure at a pretty low RPM and not a whole lot of fuel coming into the motor and you can see that the compressor is starting to enter surge uh, right in this area. So MAF is bouncing all over the place. That's because the turbo is losing its grip on the incoming air. And we're at a barometric pressure. We're in here in Nebraska, so the barrel is about 14.2 pounds. It's logged on here, but 14.2 uh, pounds uh, absolute pressure. So we only have so much to work with. The MAF is starting to see it. And you can see the oscillations are getting higher in what's called amplitude. So they go up and they get bigger. Uh, the ECM actually sees all this stuff going on. So the lambda limit, and that is, uh, so lower lambda values would mean that the mixture can be richer, like AFR can be richer. And higher values would be a leaner mixture, and that would be our limiter. You can see right here the squiggly mark, the, the lambda values actually seeing it because it knows that now there's lower airflow coming in. Um, the ECM also sees it because of grams per cylinder air mass. So 1.95, you can see where the math started to go all over the place. The grams per second, or the, the, the cylinder air mass went way down for a moment and then uh, responded as the turbo uh, exited it. It exited it by giving it a lower signal for fuel. So here's my fuel rate. It dove way down main injection pulse, it went way down also. Uh, desired vein position was all over. The turbo is actually entering electronic surge here. So all these things happen and it's actually pretty rough on the turbocharger to do this. That is the classic surge scenario where the truck is under load, we're in the gas, we're commanding decent boost, the truck's actually entering a boost pressure that it can hit, but the turbo's in, in actual surge. So. That's what it looks like on the HP Tuner tool. We see that quite a little bit when we're reviewing data logs. It's a lot easier if we can just simulate it um, on the dyno. So when people want to know what, are, what, what can it impact? So I don't know, we're rebuilding turbochargers now and building our own lines of turbochargers. So this is a rotating assembly out of the L5P turbo. This happens to have uh, our FTR compressor wheel on it. But what actually matters is this thrust bearing that pushes against this thrust washer that sits behind it, every time this turbo surges inside the vane case or inside the, the rotating assembly, it's driving pressure backwards into the thrust bearing. And that thrust bearing sits against the thrust plate, which, which is lubricated and cooled by oil and it looks like this. So this is an OEM one. This is the thrust bearing, brand new, and this is the thrust plate, and the turbo puts pressure right on top of this. And every time the turbo surges, enters surge, it is pushing force off and on against this film here, and eventually what happens is it hot spots this thrust bearing and thrust plate and burns them up. And when they start wearing some of the surface material off these, uh, the turbo doesn't respond nearly like it used to. It, you, would, you would think it has a boost leak, but in fact, it doesn't have a boost leak. The turbo is grinding into this thrust plate and then it just operates at a slower speed. We've seen that on almost every turbo that has experienced surge that we've taken in and rebuilt as a core. So. GM did a pretty good job with their intake horn. They included this uh, 
It's a surge guard from GM built into the plastic intake air horn. We came out with our own style. And again, it's not a restriction. A lot of people would think, well, geez, it's gotta be a restriction because it necks down. Well, by design, this is actually trying to eliminate, eliminate how much thrust outflow go, doesn't get into the volute. So again, we wanna, if I bolt these up and everybody looks at that, all we really did in our design was give us another millimeter of clearance between the map groove area and the inlet of our air intake horn. Especially when we push these turbochargers a lot harder than factory, it's important to keep at least some thrust area there so we can eliminate some surge. So if you guys got any more questions about turbo surge, what causes surge, how to limit surge, what it would it feel like uh, operating on the road, um, you can always give us a call, 833-789-7700. You can hit us up on Instagram. You can always look at our Facebook page, but we'll keep releasing these videos and try to keep them right to the point. That's all we got. Thanks.